Hello everybody and welcome to lesson 16, source of error in measurement. As we know, when we are doing a research, we have to measure our data correctly so as to get our finding correct. Otherwise, if there is an error in measurement of our data, so our finding will have a mistake and that mistake leads for the decision maker to make improper decision or to make incorrect decision. So to make correct decision from our research finding, we have to reduce as much as possible or we have to avoid the errors in measurement. To reduce those errors, first we have to know the source of error in measurement. There are four sources of error in measurement. The first one is the respondent, the situations, the measurer and the instrument. Let's see one by one. The first source of error in measurement is the respondent. The respondent means a person or an individual who provide a response or who feel our questionnaire or who provide a response for our interview. So the respondent, if the respondent may feel reluctant in expressing or in answering negative, strong negative or extreme feelings, so there may be an error. Or if the respondent may not admit his, his or her ignorance in answering the questions, or if the respondent may have little knowledge about our questions, so sometimes they may just feel, they may just provide the answer based on their guessing. And there are some transient or temporary factors. For example, if the respondent may feel boredom or fatigue or anxiety, so there may, uh, we may get incorrect or incomplete response during such times. And the second uh, source of error in measurement is the situations. The situation means the environment or the conditions or the circumstance around the respondent. So this may be the source of errors. For example, if the conditions which places a strain on the interview or if there is an issue of anonymity or privacy issue or we can say if there is in general uncomfortable situation found in the uh, around the respondents for example particularly if there is a presence of his or her boss or if there is a camera recording uh, the interview so the respondent may not feel may not feel good so they may restrain themselves to answer correctly Moving to the third type of source of error in measurement, that is the measurer. The measurer means the data collector who collects the data from the different sources or the data encoder who encodes or who enters the collected data into the computer or softwares. And the data analyst, the one who analyzes, the one who conducts statistical analysis of the data may have may, may be a source of error in measurement. For example, if the data encoder may encode incorrect data in the computer or may make a mistake in tabulation, or if the data analyst incorrectly analyze the data, so there may be uh, some errors. Or rewarding or reordering the questions can even distort the responses. In general, the overall looks of the interviewer may encourage or discourage the respondents to provide an answer. Moving to the, the last type of source of error in measurement is the instrument. So using defective measuring instrument or questionnaires can be a source or using complex words or poor printing of the questionnaires or omissions of uh, the response choices. For example, if our uh, questions are multiple choice and if we omit the uh, choices, so there may be an error in uh, data collections. And the other is uh, difficult words to understand. If we incorporate the difficult words to understand by the respondent, or if there are ambiguous words having a meaning of more than two, so we have to omit that uh, to reduce the errors. 
or if there is inadequate or uh, insufficient space for the answers or the response provided by the uh, respondent, so we may get only uh, incomplete answers. And the other uh, source is if we don't have uh, clear instructions for the questioners, and if there is lack of logical sequence for the questioners, so the respondent may provide an answer which is incorrect and which may be incomplete. Now let us see some of the methods which can reduce or which can mitigate those errors. So the first one is preparing a clear consent or preparing a clear agreement with a, a respondent. So in the consent or the agreement, we have to clearly put all uh, the conditions, all the situations that have to be considered while filling the uh, questionnaires for the respondent. And the second is creating a suitable condition for the respondent. We have to search or seek the situations or the circumstance that is convenient for the respondent to fill our uh, questions. And the other is well and careful, careful preparation of data collector, encoder, and analyst is very essential. So our data collector or our data encoder and our data analyst should prepare very well and should do their activities uh, carefully. And the other is using several data sources can reduce our errors. If we are using more than uh, one data source or more than two data source, so it is easy to figure out the errors and to uh, mitigate those errors. And the other is we have to use pilot tests. That means uh, we have to uh, prepare questionnaires and we have to distribute some questionnaires, maybe 30 or 40 questionnaires as a pilot test. And we have to collect those data after collecting those data so we can understand that whether the uh, respondents just uh, make a, a mistake in understanding those uh, questions or not. So we can just uh, check the validity and the reliability of uh, our questioners or our instruments. So by using those methods, we can uh, reduce those errors. And when we reduce those errors, our finding will be more accurate and our decisions based on our finding can increase its accuracy. So our accuracy of our decisions based on the research findings can be increased. This is all about today's discussion. Thank you for listening. Have a good time. Bye.